Hey everyone, my name is Juliana and this is Juliana Talks Films, the channel where I go through the process of producing, managing, and streamlining your short form content. In this episode, we're going through the initial stage of pre-production where we focus on locking our script, getting our budget and schedule set up, and getting funding for our project. Stay tuned. Now because pre-production is such a long process and there are several moving pieces that go into it, I'm breaking this video down into two parts. The first part is mainly going to focus on locking down your script, locking down funding, getting your budget in order, getting your calendar and schedule in order. So we're pretty much going to focus on getting everything established before we actually start to reach out and um, get everything for the actual physical production in order. Video number two is going to be focused more on pre-production for the physical shoot, um, which means that we're going to be focusing on casting, doing wardrobe, doing props and set design, um, pre-pro meetings, all of that jazz right before we get into actually shooting. And just as a reminder, I'm always open to suggestions. If you guys have a particular topic that you want to delve deeper into, um, leave a comment below. Let me know what it is that you're thinking. Or if you just want to say hi. <laughs> I always love hearing from you guys and I'm obviously making these videos not for myself but for you and to help you guys go through the process of production um, and understand what a producer does. So again, if you guys have any questions or you want to delve into something, a particular topic uh, more in depth, please let me know. Just leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you guys as soon as possible. So pre-production tends to be the longest phase in production and that's because you're really starting to get the foundation laid out for your film. This is what is going to set precedence for the rest of the project. So doing pre-production right and really making sure that you're taking the time to organize yourself and organize the process before you start filming is really key to making a professional film and distinguishing yourself from having a quality movie or quality film versus an amateur kitty bullshit film that you're not proud of. As a producer, you're expected to know what is happening in your film at all times. You have, you are pretty much the person that people come to to get answers from. So with that being said, <laughs> for you to know what is going on, you have to prepare yourself, you have to be ready, you have to be equipped, and you have to lay down the groundwork before you can get anything rolling. So. Let's go ahead and delve into pre-production. So obviously before we can actually start delving into planning for the film and planning for the production, we have to know what our script is. We have to have a locked script in place. So locking your script, you're either going to be uh, working with a writer or with multiple writers to get these things done, or you're going to be writing it yourself. If you're adapting a story or a book or a script, a theatrical screenplay, then obviously you're going to want to make sure that you have the legal rights in place before you actually start to adapt that into um, a script. As a rule of thumb, I always suggest having your script 90 to 95% locked, and that means that it's 90 to 90%, 90 to 95% completely done. It's not going to change. It's um, completely set. Obviously, there's going to be things that change when you're filming, but for the most part, the script itself is locked in stone. It's at its peak performance and it's at as good as it's going to get. That last 10 to 5%, you just want to be cautious and make sure that you're not adding anything crazy or over the top that's going to completely affect your budget and your timeline. So, so, so often I see this part of production being an afterthought. Um, once everything is said and done, once the film is done in post-production and locked and ready to go, people start to then think about, oh, well, where is this going to live? Or where do we want to send this to? Or, you know, this is the, such a backwards way of thinking. Honestly, you need to know what your plan is for your film, what the end goal for your film is. You need to know where you want this film to be seen and where you want it to live once you are, once everything is said and done. And the reason that this is so important is because this is actually going to affect your whole budgeting plan. And it's also going to affect the way you're creative and the way that you actually approach filming um, the actual movie. So for example, if you're planning on doing a theatrical release of your film, then you might want to consider filming an anamorphic, having those 
um, very like wide shots where you see like the two bars at the top and it's just super cinematic and super beautiful and it's just meant to be seen on a big screen. And that's something that your director and your DP and your staff and your crew are gonna wanna know because they're gonna have to plan for that. It's going to affect what lenses you use, what cameras you potentially use, how you frame your scenes, your shots it's going to affect your creative. So you need to know coming into it what your plan is for uh, where it's gonna live. If you're planning on routing your film through the film festival circuit, then obviously you're also gonna wanna have to budget for all of that. You're gonna have to budget for multiple copies of your film. You're gonna have to budget for travel, um, for submissions to the film festivals. So really start to think about what the end goal for your film is, where you want it to be seen, and where it's going to ultimately be living. Because again, this is, really important. It's going to affect your budget and not only that, it's also going to affect the way that you film and approach the filming process um, when you're actually in production. Now that your script is in place, you can start running the numbers to see what this film is actually going to cost to make. The initial thing that you want to do here is actually start to get an estimate together. Um, so an estimate is pretty much like an educated guess of how much it's going to cost you to make an actual film. Uh, so you you're gonna read through the creative concept, you're gonna read through the script, and you're gonna start to see, okay, uh, what am I gonna need here? How many days approximately do I think this is gonna take me to make? Um, how intricate is the creative? A really helpful exercise here is looking back at any past productions that you've done and comparing those past productions to this current script. Are they alike in any way? What are some similarities that you see from past productions in the similar script um, and how much did those past productions cost you and start to make an estimate start to break down an estimate based on what past jobs what past production jobs cost you and start to plug those numbers into an estimate of what you think it's gonna cost you to make this particular film. If you haven't made a film in the past, or if you haven't made a production similar to the kind of film that you're currently working on, my suggestion to you would be to reach out to other producers that have maybe worked on similar projects in the past. Another thing that you could actually do is reach out to potential production partners, reach out to people who you might be interested in bringing in as partners, as production partners, as collaborators, um, for example, production companies that manage directors and that um, set up the actual production process or editorial houses and things like that and ask them what you think or what they think it would cost to make this film. Now, I don't really recommend reaching out to people so soon while you're still in the estimate process just because people tend to get a little bit excited. They start to follow up on you. So it might not be the best time to do that. Um, you really want to make sure that you have uh, an actual budget in place before you start engaging people. But worst case scenario, if you're at a loss um, for numbers and you're not too sure how much it's gonna cost you because you haven't done anything like this in the past, it's obviously really helpful to reach out to people who are familiar with this kind of production, with these kinds of productions, or familiar with these kinds of processes um, so that they can give you an estimated guess or a ballpark number for how much it will cost. You wanna get an estimate in place because people wanna know how much it's gonna cost to make the actual film, not just you, but your production partners and your investors and your financers and backers. Um, so if you're working with a client, for example, and you're making this film or video for a client and they're the ones who are going to be funding this whole production, they obviously are gonna wanna know approximately what it's gonna cost them to make this film. If you're doing this film on your own and it's a passion project and you're trying to attach potential finan financers or um, investors into the film, then you're gonna wanna have this estimate it ready for them to review so that they can get an idea of how much it's going to cost. And even if it's just you, you're the one who's doing this as a passion project and you're pouring your heart and soul out into it and you're going to be financing it on your own, you want to make sure that you know how much money you have, how much money it's, it's going to cost you currently as the script stands so that you can then start to plan and budget for that. If you do have um, financial backers, if you are, regardless of who you're working with, whether it's a studio or a production company, a client or a brand, private investors or funders, 
or just yourself, you funding your own project, the good thing about creating an estimate is that you can then start the conversation of, okay, well, this is how much it's gonna cost, but we only have this much amount of money to make this film happen. happen. So what can you do with the funds that we do have? How can you make this happen with the funds that, we, that you do have, um, the funds that we are able to provide? Um, so it's just a really great way to start opening up that conversation of how much money you actually might have, how much money investors are willing to put into the film, how much money your client is willing to invest into this project. And then from there, seeing if you can make it work um, within those budget constraints, seeing where you can um, cut certain resources, cut certain funding and allocate it to different areas depending on what is of priority for the film um, or you can also start to see if maybe I can uh, get or garner additional funding somewhere else if this investor is telling me that they only have X amount of money to invest in this film uh, how else can where else can I tap into to top off that last percentage of funds that I need to actually make the film that I want or worst case scenario, you might it might open up an honest conversation about can this film really be made? Is it something that we need to go back and start to rework the script and figure out how to simplify the creative, how to simplify the film um, or the script in order to make it happen with the money that we do have. This process is so important in order to understand, to wrap your head around how much money you have, to wrap your head around uh, what you might be needing. Also just to start figuring out um, how to even make it happen and start to think creatively about how to make your film work with the funds that you have. And of course, once you actually know how much money you have to make the film, then you can actually get a solid, locked budget in place and know how much money you have allocated for each particular line item such as actual production, editorial, post-production, telecine, music, talent, whatever it is that your film's going to require. In tandem with your estimate and budget, you're gonna want to start to create a production calendar. Um, so your production calendar is obviously based on how much time you have. Usually if you're working with a client or a brand or a studio or a production house, uh, they will have a particular deadline that you need to hit for when this film needs to be made, when this film needs to be completely done and out the door and ready to be distributed out into the world. If you're working on a passion project for yourself, then obviously you get to decide when that deadline is going to be. Just make sure that you have a deadline in place um, so that you can start to figure out what your timeline is actually going to be looking like and start planning out what's gonna be done on any given week or day or month. You wanna make sure in your calendar that you have pre-production laid out. How long is it gonna take you guys to be doing pre-production? You wanna make sure that you have your shooting days outlined. And then you also wanna make sure that you have editorial laid out. How long is it gonna take you to edit the film? How long is it gonna take you to color the film? How long is it gonna take you to do any motion graphics or any visual effects of, on the film? Uh, what is the audio mixing process going to look like? So just taking into account all of these phases of the entire production process in your calendar and outlining them as extensively as possible. Again, it really helps to refer back to any past projects that you've done. If you haven't made a film in the past or if you haven't made a particular film like this, tap into your resources. Ask other producers or other directors who have been in a similar um, in similar productions and have done similar films. I love using Google Slides to build out my production calendars. Um, I have a template of a calendar that I formerly used in my, my past job that I've just taken with me and it's so helpful. What I love about working in Google Docs and just Google Drive in general is that you can share these documents with other people. And as you're going through the production process, dates are gonna shift, uh, things are gonna change, and you can 
edit it very easily in Google Slides and obviously your team can see it in live time. If you guys are interested in seeing how I build out my production calendars, leave a comment below and let me know and I might do a video and I might um, create an actual template for you guys to download. So in part two of the video, we're gonna start to talk about engaging potential production partners to come in, engaging directors, um, editors, doing all that fun stuff, starting to cast, starting to get your um, props and wardrobe wardrobe and locations in place and all of that fun good stuff. All right, so I think that about wraps it for part one of this pre-production video. If you guys have any specific comments or questions, again, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. I'll catch you on, I'll catch you guys on the next one. <laughs> all right, bye.